I'm here. You here? Like a little hobbit. Right. Okay, guys. Welcome to episode four of the Lure Fishing Podcast. My <laughs> We're back. Um, we're back with me, Andy, and DB still here. For those of you who watched last week, this is part two. Didn't call um, me Schmeagel. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> you look better than me, that. <laughs> so we've been, we've had a cup of tea, we've had a cup of coffee. We're revitalised. We're coming back at it. Um... I think we're going to kick things off and take a little bit of a step sideways. I'm going to ask Dan about... First of all, guys, they've sat me here with this bloody mic like this. Look. Well, it's better than you leaning all over I'm like, me. Look, I'm like... That's... I can't even move. <laughs> look, I'm like this. So, my question to Dan. What do you do when the river's being closed? Just ignoring me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with the river's being closed? Yeah. Um, canals. Yeah. Uh, I've got two or three still waters that I fish. Um, not so much. Yep. And from the 25th of March, where I live anyway, different everywhere in the country, trout season. Yeah, we've been um, there. We've had this conversation. So. <laughs> trout, we think there should be unified rules. Like we, we, we really don't agree with the fact that it, it well, it's confusing at least that it's the has got different dates. Yeah, but the, yeah, the whole game fishing, mm. uh, spot fishing, cast fishing fiasco is never going to line up. No, it? no. I don't so think yeah, so. trout fishing, I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, Get some bigger trout this year. Like last year was the first year I really got into lure fishing for trout. Yep. Uh, it's so much fun. Like trout just got mental, don't they? Yeah, oh, they're uh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, trout fishing I'm looking forward to. Uh, I don't target big pike anymore. Um, I just fish for jacks, which yep. is what I enjoy doing anyway. So, yep. I've, got, I've got a few waters where I know I can catch a lot of small fish, which is fun. Uh huh. Um, perch fishing and, yeah, just general, you know, a bit of canal fishing, bit of still water, and hopefully a lot of trout. Bit of salt water? When it warms up, yeah. yeah. I, want to, I want to catch my first uh, sea bass this year. Oh, I keep saying it. I keep making it so the shivers down my spine saying the, the horrible sea bass. So, yeah, um, I want to catch my first bass. Um, my brother knows some really good marks up in Scotland for catching big pollock from the shore. Well, yeah. Um, so, some big pollock. My, my PB is like eight pound from the shore. So, I want yeah. to get a double figure one. I don't know if I've, I've had small ones from Weymouth Pier but from the shore, but. Um, I've had big ones from the boat. I had a sixteen pounder years nice, ago yeah. um, uh, on old school wrecking techniques. Yeah, yeah. Not, not exactly finesse. Well, yeah, You're pop- going to wreck me sitting like this. Christ! I have to sit forward because the lead won't reach the mains. <laughs> I can't look. Oh, God. So I got to sit like this. This it's is your good. house, don't you? Yeah. Have a long <laughs> extension cable. This is stitched up. <laughs> uh, failed, failed to prepare. Prepare I to fail. I have failed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, salt water, ras, a little bit of ras fishing, yeah. um, big pollock. Um, hopefully do a bit of bait fishing for spur dogs as well. Um, Wicked, yeah. They're very interesting spit fish. So yeah. I've caught them in a couple of different places around the country. I've caught them on the west coast of Scotland yeah. uh, from Oban, when common skate fishing. Yeah, that's where I've caught them as well. Um, and strangely, for we've actually missed it this year now, but there's a period in February, March time, where they show up just outside the Thames. All right. And they're going to deep water there, and there's a, there's a mark that you can go to and catch these really big ones, you know, yeah. like, like knocking on the door of records. Yeah, yeah. And they hang around there for a, a week, two weeks, and they go. Is that a secret? Uh, no. Not anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, the only people that watch this are his mum and my mum. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. They don't go fishing. No, it, it, everyone knows. Well, where exactly it is is the secret. The secret they turn up is the, the fact they turn up is no secret. Nobody knows yeah. where to go. That's, that's the whole thing. It's quite nice in fishing to have a bit of mystery still, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think that's why I like lure fishing so much. It's That's why I moved away from carp fishing towards lure fishing, because... You didn't want to be fishing for old Betty anymore. You wanted to be fishing every for... Every bloody now. fish had a name. Like, <laughs> yeah. I felt bad. Like, old Barney's been caught 15 times already since June. It's only July 1st. Like, I felt bad for him. I felt, like, there's, there's a yeah. little one-acre park lake near me that had about 100 fish in it, and literally every single one of them's got a name. From 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 the ten pounder up to the thirty pounder, so yeah, that's the the mystery is why I sort of stepped away from carp yeah. fishing into lure fishing. I, I think that's the thing about salt water as well. It's, it's total unknown. It's total unknown. You could you could be fishing for bass and you might pull up a, you know, a, a sea bass. Any, a, mm. The sea, yeah. sorry, sea bass. You could be fishing mm. for a sea bass. And you might pull up a striped bass. <laughs> yeah, but that happened. Did you a, see that? A striped. Someone caught a, someone caught a striped bass from uh, the Admiralty Pier in Dover. 
No way. Yeah, just one fish just turned up. Well, I mean, there's tuna and everything yeah. out now. Uh, yeah, stingrays off Chesil. Yeah. It's... I've caught, I caught a stingray last oh, yeah. uh, not last year, year before, but off of um, St. Osef's in Clacton in, in Essex. Not a big one, 20, 25 pounds, something like that. Went tuna fishing last last year. Didn't catch any, saw them. It's impressive. Well, um, yeah, there's so, there's so much you can do. Yeah. yeah but, and they've uh, not got names either. No, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, I have got names. Some of those big common skate up in Oban. Because they, they, they yeah. catch them from the same place over and over again. But they're... Uh... My brother had one of them offshore as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. 150 pounds. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they're they're impressive. Yeah. I wouldn't. It's not something I do regularly because it's bloody painful. Yeah, I can they're, imagine. You know, it's big, yeah. Dragging them up from 550 foot. Like sitting like, like, car, sitting like this yeah. is painful, but I'm yeah. all right. Yeah, we always good good training if we go skate fishing. <laughs> it's going to be me for the next half hour whinging. But um, did you not know find sea fishing is a bit like chuck it out, let the bite develop, and let it. Develop further. It can be like that, but it's the same with any fishing. It's um, it's what you make of it. You know, I I I really started sort of getting into the LRF fishing again, like, like last year. Have you heard of that before? LRF. I've done a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what it means? Yeah. Because I haven't got a clue. Light rock fishing. Oh there God. You go. <laughs> Old boomer. Boomer. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. I have no idea. Do you know what HRF is? Uh, heavy rock fishing. Yes. There you That's go. Exactly it. Yeah. 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 But I, I spent about four hours last year catching <laughs> gobies that were no bigger than my finger. Yeah. And loved every second of it. There's, 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 the thing is, it's... Uh, genuine. It's, it's fun. It's more to learn as well. And like, it's, it's, that, it's that harking back to I'm being I'm that disappointed in yeah. you. I can't even reach the mic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good fun. It's like you know, rock pulling as a kid. It's that sort of like inner child when you comes yeah. out and you're like, wow, what are we going to get next? It's great. What, a size 26 hook? 20, 22s. So, genuine. T- size 22s. Well, a bit of ice on it. Yep. Yeah. Little split oh. shot, number eight split shot. D- dead true. I'll take you. And I guarantee you... Uh, I don't want to do it. It's I, all right. I'm I fine. guarantee you, you'll enjoy it. Everyone who, who I've taken loves it. I was fishing, right, in South End Beach, South End Seafront Beach, there's these old concrete Victorian swimming pools. Yeah. They're about half a foot deep all the way across. I was catching little tiny sand gobies out of them, like little tiny things like that, and loved every second of it. Genuine, it's good fun. I'll prove it to you. This year in summer, no, we'll I do don't want to go. Yeah, we'll like, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go sea bass fishing. I'll go sea bass fishing. I'll go sea bass fishing. Sea yeah. bass fishing. See, it's been a recurring thing. Sea skate fishing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, sea, sea, sea fishing as well. <laughs> yeah. It can be easy. You know, you can go for mackerel, which are really yep. good spot as well. Yeah. Or you can make it really difficult for yep. yourself chasing skate. There's, there's that much of a, yeah, yeah, definitely. a range to it. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, uh, have you seen the guy that does a uh, fish locker? Yep. Yeah, yeah. He he catches some impressive fish on lures. Doesn't mm. he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's there's so much scope for lure fishing in salt water in the UK that we haven't. There's a lot. There's a, there's a handful of people really pushing it, um, especially around that sort of southwesty coast area. A lot of guys like like experimenting with some other bits and pieces, catching species you wouldn't expect. In fact, I'll give him a little bit of a shout out. There's a good friend of mine, a guy called Robin Howard, who runs a an, a lure only charter boat in Brighton and the species he's caught on lure is, is unreal undulate ray smooth hound dogfish it, it, everything everything that you can that people catch on bait he catches on lures and I think it opens people's eyes a little bit he, he, he Go, bait goby you can catch a goby yeah you can get your cool eyes I've got a crab on a lure once yeah you go yeah <laughs> I just called crabs, but that's a different thing. <laughs> that, that was last time you stayed. No, no lure needed. <laughs> right, let's, let's let's get back on track. We've verged off. What I want to talk about, Dan, is LMAB. Yes. How did that all come about? So, um, so I went full time with YouTube in February two thousand and twenty-one. Yep. Um, so I was making my living off the AdSense, and I had a star as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, making lures, making rigs, selling rigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then around about April, I got a message off Tom Hunt. You know Tom? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Um, top angler. <coughs> Very nice man as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he messaged me saying um, that the guys in Germany, Hetschenbach is a channel, uh, mm-hmm. were wanting someone in the UK to do their YouTube credit cut. Um, and he said he'd put my name forward for it. Um, so the guy who runs Hetschenbach also owns LMAB. Yep. Um, so he got in contact with me. Said, you know, unfortunately with COVID, you're not going to be able to come over and do the YouTube credit cup. 
but you know, I'll send you some lures and see what you think. So they sent me a load of lures out and I, I really liked them. Like there was something a bit different about them. Yeah. Um, like they, they did smell really strongly when yeah, they opened yeah, the yeah, box up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I really liked the baits when he sent them to me, <laughs> which was like April time. Um, so I started using them and then sort of like end of June, I think, he messaged me again and said, you know, do you want to do more work together? You know, maybe some sponsored videos, sponsored Instagram posts. Yep. Um, so we started doing that, did that sort of like for the rest of 2021. So I stopped my store and, you know, did that to sort of supplement yep. my AdSense revenue. Um, and then like at the beginning of this year, and they said, you know, do you want to work further for us, help us with our marketing in the UK? And uh, yeah, so I started working with them on a full-time basis at the beginning of February. Yeah. Uh, you know, running the social medias, using all their products, you know, filming the videos still. So basically what I do is exactly what I do now, but I use more of their products, which is what I'm happy with because I really like them. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. 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 Basically, uh, yeah, it's worked out nicely. Yeah, great. Uh, how much of your role is um, testing new products? Do you get to see them before we see them? A lot of, yeah, I've had some uh, TPE ones for quite a while now. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, should I've, be out soon. I've heard, I've heard rumours of these. I've heard, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've heard good I, things as well. I gave like. one to Dave and uh, he was catching a lot of fish on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I had uh, accidentally I, caught a nearly £20 pike on one. Really? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, yeah they are... They are uh, Really nice TP though, so I'm looking forward to them coming out. I remember when myself and you fished on Grafham, yeah. you had the Blady Jigs that are now out, well before they was out, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I did, yeah. 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 That, that was my first look at them, they're great. Right? They are, yeah. yeah. Um... We've got a slight technical hitch. I was meant to pass down his bag. Oh, yeah. It's right over in the corner. He can reach it, he's got long arms. <laughs> he can reach it. So... Episode four is the episode of things not quite going right, but it's we'll be okay. We're going to have one of them, aren't we? So <laughs> we definitely need a third mic. Yeah, 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 or a longer cable. Or, or a longer cable. Yeah. How yeah. we haven't electrocuted ourselves, I do not know. But well, we'll be okay. there's still time. Yeah, so I don't think I've got any of the new products that aren't out on me. No, to be honest with you. I, I didn't even pack anything to bring. I've just got my bag that I was. This is real. This it's raw. <laughs> it's uncut. It's exactly as it was. Well, it I've, even, I've even got a live bait flow in there. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> At least you film everything so people know when you do Yeah, catch exactly, them. yeah. yeah. But yeah I love them. It's uh, one of the finesse fillet crawls. Yeah. The shape of them is so different to most of the other crawls you see. I think they're absolutely yeah. brilliant. The, the, I think the best thing about those is that that's, that's been used quite that's, a bit. That's, that's absolutely knackered, mate. You need yeah. a new one of those. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best thing, about, I've been experimenting with the Texas rig a lot this year, and yeah. the hookup rate with those is incredible because you get that, the cross, yeah. the thin profile yeah you get that more exposure of the hook yeah. point yeah and and another thing that people yeah, don't don't think things. about doing with them is actually swimming them yeah they yeah. think they're trying they fish them slow which, which does work but I mean me and you again back to, harking back to Graffin when you had that fish slam one of them it was like mid water when I was yeah, that, it? yeah yeah followed it all the way up from the bottom and absolutely trashed it yeah and they were, I use them as trailers yeah um, yeah buzz bait trailers chat bait trailers mm. like they work uh, incredibly that yeah. smells so. beautiful yeah. It's got a real strong scent. seafood scent. Seafood scent. Mm. Yeah, great. Well, yeah, the perch, that's the 11 cent. I had a three and a half pound perch on one of those. Wow. It's the 11 cent. Watch that one. hook, mate. You gave yourself a nose, nose piercing there. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least, I, I, at least I, we get I'll views. get a new pack out for you to sniff. Dad, that's I really use them in this do. size. They look great in this yeah. size. Little, yeah. The Xander yeah. ones as well. Yeah. I like the Xander ones. The Xander skin. Yeah. And yeah, you. The, the jig head sits perfectly in the mouth of the bait. Yeah, well. it's very clever. Yeah. These are brilliant. I think these are so different to anything else that, that, that I've seen in the UK. They are, yeah. They're quite underrated, aren't they, as yeah. well? Really, people will put off because they think they're a gimmick, but actually they're brilliant. Have a sniff. Ooh. Right up there. Get it right up there. <laughs> <laughs> you can just stick one up each Yeah, you'll so lose it. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think they're brilliant. Like the, the profile, that float, flat profile on the front of the head moves so much water. Yeah, so they have like a, it's sort of like a popper head. Yeah, it's concave, isn't it? And yeah, yeah it pushes, just like the Mirrors Masters, it pushes water. Yeah. Big paddle tail. And it, don't know when this video is going out, but probably they'll be out by now. They've just made a twin curly tail version. Really? So how do you rig uh, that then, Dan? What's the... Do you, just a jig head. Just a jig head? Yeah. Because um, I'd use that. that. That looks like a surface bait, but obviously it's not. Mm. No, you just use it as a... I mean, you could use it as a surface bait. Yeah. Um, just with a hook. Yeah, weightless. So you just use a weightless yeah. with a hook, yeah? Yeah. So you use a jig head on it and it... 
I think they, they do them in larger sizes as well, don't they? I, yeah, f- I forget what the. 60 centimetre is what I use quite a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, just, just a size one. Does it, one, does it oh, randomly yeah. wander as well because of the concave front? It does. It, it shimmies a little yeah. bit, like, sort of yeah. like this. Yeah, it does It does give it a little bit of a crazy action. Mm. But, you know, when the fishing's difficult, something like that is what can really turn them on. You yeah. know, something just they've not seen. Yeah. And, yeah, make them go mad. Yeah, because yeah, okay. if you're using that small jig head and that small hook, you're going to be not through the middle of the bait, mm-hmm. which is going to make it move even yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I, I, love that. I love the, I don't know if you've got any to hand, but the finesse fillets, the, 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 the flat profile. I do, yeah. Shit, right, yeah, yeah, I think they're brilliant. They are, I've caught quite a lot of fish on those as well. Do, do you know where they're really underused and I use them quite a lot is um, dibbling on canals? Just yeah. d- just down, down the edge, just because that's one of the big, there's a four centimetre as well, isn't there? Is it uh, seven, seven, 11 it? and 15. That's right, the little ones, the sevens, yeah. you use them with a small jig head down, down yeah, the edge. Every cast you can oh. catch on them, yeah. Yeah, The, th- the thing about those is you barely any movement, yeah. just get them twitching ever so slightly. Yeah. You rig them sideways on a jig head. So they lay and, flat, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have one rigged up somewhere. So you, 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 your jig head would come out about here. So yeah. you, can, you could use those drop shot baits. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is that the smallest one they do? No. They do uh, small. I have a small one, yeah. That's the smallest one. Ah, wow. So that would be a really nice drop shot bait, wouldn't it? Yeah. That just shimmers, yeah. And it's for, especially, I think, for... Well, that's the small craw as well, yeah. which, which catches a lot of perch. Mm. I actually had a uh, two-pounder on that this morning. Yeah. That colour? Uh, sunrise colour. Yeah. It's a good, good colour. I like the... Um... They, they all smell the same. But <laughs> they're not plastic. They are seafood. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they hold their scent quite well, which is yeah. some, some lures, I think, they just sort of... I lose it real quick yeah. after maybe half an hour. Like these, these have been in my box for months. So yeah. yeah. They're still small. I spoke to Daniel about it. He said he went to the factory. Um, and, he, you know, he said, he said mm. that, you know, the scented, but not enough. You know, just, just really go for it. Keep tipping it. Keep tipping it. Really strong. I said to Daniel, we should shed it in bottles. Yeah, sure. Should get that stuff sold in bottles. Because you, you know, if you could get into a gel. Yeah. That would be brilliant, like, you know. The, the thing is, as well, scent's quite underrated. Really it is. It makes a huge... Even in pike fishing with yeah. bigger lures, it makes a huge amount of difference. Yeah. Right, this has been my question then, because my boat partner in the WPC is Eric. He likes the old bite juice. Yep. And he goes to me, bite juice? And I go, nah. And um, this is, is it to catch the angler? Or does it make a difference? I, I have personally witnessed it have it the, the desired effect personally and on more than one occasion uh the one that really done it for me is the um what's the gel it's, it's, oh, it's a secret secret no one, you're not allowed to talk about that i'm not allowed to talk about that one i've, I've, I've been told i'm not allowed to talk <laughs> oh, about right because it sells out every time someone talks about it yeah <laughs> I, I did i did that I yeah what yeah what is it the is it elex make it elex yeah. um i know which one you mean i forget what it's called gonna, i'm gonna blink this next bit and go beep <laughs> Yeah. We've missed, you've missed it. I beeped it out. Especially, that's why I've got enough. Yeah. I, I, I have been fishing a spot on the river that I know there's perching for half an hour. Yeah. Put some of that on two casts later. Yeah. I had uh, three pound eight. Yeah. So it does work. Hundred percent. It might have been a coincidence. I've seen it. I've seen it happen too often with that particular scent. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you wouldn't think it would work. <laughs> Something about it. Yeah. See, I, I've got a theory about this. I think it gives the angler confidence. That's what it works. Possibly also true. Yeah. So I think it doesn't really... We, we're never going to know for sure whether the fish can smell it, <laughs> but it's like, you, what's your favourite lure? What's your go-to lure? Yeah. You, you use something that you've got confidence in, and it doesn't matter, does it? It could be the case that when it's got a scent, you leave it for that split second longer pause, yeah. and that might be what it yeah, is, because, yeah. you, you know, it's got that attraction. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. You never know, really. There's no, no one... You can't be confident. You can't be sure of anything, really, yeah. in that yeah. fishing. Yeah. No. I like those. Yeah, it's you interesting. Can keep that on if you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what you're just gonna, that's you for the rest of the day. Yeah. Just yeah. I feel a bit light. Yeah. light headed. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got any plans to go out and do any filming work with the NMAB guys out on, in Europe? Or I was supposed to go at the end of February. Yeah. Uh, but due to COVID, yeah, there was a mandatory ten day quarantine in <sighs> Holland still. So. Right. Missed that one, but I'm going, hopefully, middle of April, going to Germany. Brilliant. Um, and hopefully, yeah, we'll, when close season's over in the Netherlands, we'll stop it down. I really like that the ethos that, the, sorry, like NMAB and sort of Hector Bush will sort of connect the two, how 
they're really they're putting a lot of effort into the growth of lure fishing in Europe and I like yeah, that ethos yeah. and, and it's good for the sport that they're pushing things and pushing people yeah. to improve and do more and I think it's great I think we need more companies like that are willing to invest their time it, and effort it's something that's needed like yeah. you can market however you want through social media but like it's so much better when the consumers get something back mm. as, as in like a video or yep. something like that or yep. a series to watch compared yep. to just like seeing an advert it's, of course you know, yeah, it might yeah. cost a little bit more to do, but I think it's it connects a lot better with the audience and everything like that, and it definitely shows like the product work better as well when you can actually yeah. see them getting caught. Yeah, on video, hundred percent, just in pictures and stuff. Definitely. But yeah, it's um, yeah, they're push, pushing really hard with the marketing, and you know, it's it's good, like you say, it's good for the industry. It's, yeah, it, and, it'd and be better if more companies did that. Yeah, and I think the, the the speed of their growth in the UK is evident. Yeah. Because of that, you know, it wasn't that long ago, not many people knew who they were. And now pretty much everyone I bump into knows who they are. Yeah, I mean, this time last year, they, they weren't, they just started selling it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's good. Mm. We've got a pause. Go on. No, I keep turning this mic up and down, that's all. Um, right, mate, so you've, your growth, we spoke, we spoke on episode three about how you grew the channel. Yeah. Amazing. Now you're, you've got this, this relationship with a big lure firm. Yeah. Where are you, where are you going next? Do you have plans for the future? Um, do you do feel I like, have plans for the future? Does, does DB think that far ahead? Do you feel like branching outside of fishing is a, is a possibility? Like your content could move into other things in well, the outdoor space? Or I was thinking, yeah, like with... Well, I mean, I just bought a van to turn to a camper van. So I was thinking, you know, could do a series on something like that. Brilliant, yeah. Um... But yeah, I'd probably if I was doing that, I'd probably start a second channel or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, know, with, yeah. With the fishing channel being technically being a job now, you yeah. know, I could start that as a second channel just as a hobby. Again. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's something that I'd want to do. It's just whether I can find the time to do it. Because of course, it, it, yeah. Trying to film as many videos as I film consumes a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't see you don't see the days where I go out and don't catch anything. I'll just catch one fish and it's not really worth putting in a video or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, So... I would like to do that, but it's just if I can find the time to fit in. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's definitely definitely something that I'd like to do. It, like if this sort of fizzles out as well with the fishing, you know, maybe I would do that instead. Yeah, more, yeah. You know? So I, 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 the reason I asked that is because um, a short while ago, and maybe I don't know, last year, sometime September, October last year, there was a bit of a thing with the American guys who were being de- demonetized within the hunting. Oh yeah, thing. Yeah. And there was sort of chatter that that might start happening within fishing as well. So there's always that with YouTube. There's always that funny sort of like balance of, are they just going to rip it all away from you? Because they could whenever they want to. Yeah. So it's got to be a bit of a uh, a concern when you're sort of down that one, that, that track where they could take a stance against it and you're pretty much stuffed. There's not a lot you could do about it. So um, do you consider that or not really? Is it just sort of like you take day by day as it comes? I mean, if it happens, it happens. I yeah. mean, I don't think they'd take the content now. No. I think they'd just demonetize, which, I mean, the you don't need the AdSense revenue to make a living from it anyway. Yeah, of course. Cool. Um, yeah. That's just like a small part of it now. Yeah. Um, But yeah, if that happened, I think, you know, I'd still do it because I enjoy doing it. Yeah. Like, I, you know, if, if I went back to working as a postman, yeah, I, I'd still make, I'd still go fishing and I'd still film it because it, it's something that I enjoy doing and... Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't just stop just because I don't make money. Because I, I did it for five years without making money. Yeah, so. yeah, I think that's evident for most people that would watch your videos. That yeah. it's evident that you you do it because you want to. It's not you're not doing it because you're getting paid to do it. You're doing it because you did it for all that time without getting paid yeah, to do it. Yeah. yeah. There was a question I wanted to ask you five minutes ago, but I didn't want to butt in from my prone position. Like I'm, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna need physio after this one. <laughs> <laughs> when you, Dan, I know I know you can't say specifically because it's impossible. But how long would you say it takes for you to produce one video from conception of what you're going to do to going out filming, to going home, to editing, uploading it and pinging it out there? How, just explain to everybody how long this process takes. Um, t- every video is different. You know, if it, if it was just a video like at home talking about lures, maybe two, three hours. Whereas some days I can go out on a boat for 10 hours, you know, two hour drive. 10 hours on a boat, two hour drive home, and then sort through all the video footage, edit it, do all the captions and, you know, do all the description and everything, make a thumbnail, you know, it might take, 
20 hours altogether. Mm. And then, mm. yeah, so another video might take two or three. So yeah, so I, yeah, I know it's impossible to say for each, but so I mean, you, you maybe eight hours for, for an average, average video of you know going fishing a canal for a few hours and then going and edit maybe eight hours altogether. That's as long as all the equipment works, you don't have any audio failure. Yeah, I do any... things quite basic. So <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep, keep uh, the technicalities to a minimum, and uh, yeah, it's it runs quite smoothly. Most of the time. Most of the time. This podcast, we, we're going to have to invest, mate, in a third mic. I think so. Or I'm just going to sit on the floor next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be like that. You can just pat me and go, <laughs> I mean, it probably would have been easier if you had this mic and I had that mic. But. That's, a, that's a good point. I mean, nearly <laughs> nearly 30 minutes in, you could have said that before, couldn't you? It's all right, mate. I'm just like, <laughs> scarred for life. But it's fine. I'll just sit like this. How are we doing for time? We're doing for time. Charlie's got to go soon, haven't you? I have got to go soon. I've got to drive yeah. back to deepest, darkest Essex. Have you got your passport? Yeah. Will they let you in? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm born and bred and I, so I'm all right. If anyone knows Charlie, how, how has his car door not fallen off? <laughs> every, t- every time you open the car door, <laughs> it makes yeah. the nastiest... I think that's coming off. Yeah. Which well, you know happened? I was on South End Seafront. I opened the door... And the South End. W- South, 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 South End. Spelled S A R F E N D. South End. H R F, mate. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. from Essex. And <laughs> we're heavy. The wind caught it and bent it the wrong way. What, your door? Yeah, the wind slammed it open and bent it the wrong way ever since then, which was about a year ago. It's made a funny noise. It gets me from A to B, mate. That's all I worry about. That's all you need. Yeah. It's going in for MOT tomorrow. It's definitely going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> well, it fired on the door. Right? Well, no, on everything else is wrong with it. Oh, uh, well, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's why you take it for a special MOT. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a nice vehicle now, but I have had over the years, vans are awesome, aren't they? For fishing, I don't know if you can. I have to say, yes, for fishing, you can't beat a van. I am definitely not getting another van. Well, you're an ex posty. Why have you not got a van? Well, I did. I had a van until December when going in the motorway about 75 mile an hour, the engine just decided to seize up. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> So that happened, yeah. and yeah, I bought a car. But I have got a van actually. I've just, I've just last Thursday I picked up a van that I'm going to turn into a camper van, but it's Brilliant. very big. So awesome! Yeah. I, I, I done at the beginning of the first lockdown. I bought a camper that was done. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah it was lovely. But it was an old Peugeot that had been converted. Beautiful. I had all these like visions of the, these wonderful fishing trips away. Took it in for its MIT. Uh, guy lifted it up on the on the ramp, and he was like, "Things buggered, mate." I said, what do you mean? He said, look under the leaf. It was rotten as a... Oh, God. So I was like, well, that's the, that gone then. And it's just, that was it. Never used like it. my used underpants. Yeah, you, yeah, you used underpants, yeah. Yeah, we're back on that again. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a long wheelbase of transit. Lovely, 60,000 yeah. miles. Oh. So hopefully it's not rotten. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd try and convert it without electrocuting myself, which I nearly yeah. did yesterday. Yeah. Are you going to do it all worry. yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Cool. I'd yeah. definitely film that. I think, well, I mean, I personally, I'd love to see that. So, it's maybe something I'd, I'd consider doing in the future. Well, you could do a little bit as you, you got. I'm just finishing this up before I go fishing. Yeah. So, yeah. you could link it in, couldn't you? So yeah, you yeah, could be right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just be do, showing people bits as you're yeah. just going off. And yeah. I'd just it, make one big video, like as a time lapse. Yeah. From the back of me just doing it. Yeah. I mean, most of it's just been me ripping stuff out and like <laughs> scratching my head yeah. in the back, trying to figure out where all the wires yeah. go at the minute. But... Calling the professionals. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, just Google his stuff. Yeah, yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> How to. Yeah. How yeah. to fix a van. Where does this wire lead? Is yeah. it before I uh, it? What do we do before YouTube and, and asking it how to live life? Because on a daily basis, I have to ask YouTube stuff. Show me how to do this. That's how I did my windows. Yeah. Them I yeah. get the paint off the metal. How, how to remove paint from a metal yeah. window frame. Yeah. yeah. Sad, isn't it? Everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. From, from real manual things like changing the windscreen wipers on my van, how to do that, to how do I get this effect in Premiere Pro when I'm editing a video. Yeah. Everything's there. What do we do before it? Not those things. Just thing. didn't know things. Yeah, just didn't do those things. <laughs> it's called progress. Yeah, it, it is, is progress. progress. Yeah. I had a burning question then to ask Dan, and old age is setting again, or it might be my bad back. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Drawing blood away from your brain. It's it? done something, yeah. yeah. But uh, no. Right, mate, time is pressing on. Time is pressing on. Um, let me just remind everybody, if we really want 
you to send us stuff in that you've made. So like the viewer sent Dan Lurs, if you are a, um, a budding lure maker and you're sat at home and you've got some lures that you're very proud of, even if you're not that particularly proud of them, but you want us to have a uh, look at them and even perhaps have a fish with them, send them in. Again, I will keep it in the description of every podcast of um, Alex's Tackle Shop, which is that, that non-lure one, so that keeps that nice and kind of a neutral ground there. So send them in there and we'll, we'll try and showcase as much things as we can. That was, I loved the way people have made you lures, Dan. Mm. Yeah, that, cool, isn't it? that is so nice. Yeah. And it must be those little things that are unexpected that yeah. must make the whole journey that you've been on really worthwhile. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it, like I say, it's, it's so surprising that when it, whenever I get recognized, it's, it's like, that's just a big surprise because yeah. I don't expect it. I still, I, like, I am just a normal person. Like, I don't feel like I have a big platform or anything like that. I just literally go out, film my videos. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's humbling. Yeah, yeah it's cool. It's great. That's how, is that your phone that's going on? Yeah, it is my phone, mate. Yeah. Is that Essex calling? It's Essex calling back, yeah. Say what time are you going to be at? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> You're late. Yeah. You haven't left yet. Yeah. Well, talking of late, Dan, can I just say from both myself and Charlie, thank you so much thank for you, giving me the time. I appreciate it. Thanks for my dinner. That's <laughs> right. Nice burger. But no cheese. No cheese. No cheese. spoons had run out of cheese. So, is it? No, it's a pleasure. Thank you for coming down. Thank you, mate. It's, it's been, really nice. It's been a uh, pleasure coming down. It's been nice to see everything, see your big mosque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so if, if anyone sees Dan, he just very genuine. When I first met him, incredibly genuine person. not known him very long at all. As soon as I mentioned this, he said, I'll be Dan. Yeah. And he, that was that simple. I'm coming. Yeah. yeah. And that's great. So really and then now I'm here. And now you're here. here. Yeah. So uh, next week, it's me and you. We'll get rid of Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll stay in Essex. And uh, I'll sit in Charlie's <laughs> corner and I've got a nice mic, so it'll yeah. be all right. Yeah. Um, buddy, anything else that you'd like to add? No, I think... Oh, I can't turn. No, I think we've wrapped it up. Set in a position. Um, we'll obviously, we'll link, you'll all have seen Dan's videos by now anyway, but as a matter of courtesy, we'll, we'll link Dan's things in the description. Because um, I'm sure we're bigger than him. <laughs> there might be some people that watch this and don't know who Dan is, but we'll get there. So anyway, we'll link Dan, we'll link myself and Andy. If you want any see anything else in this podcast or if, if we're missing anything that we should be doing, let us know. Because we want to, like we've said on numerous occasions, we want this to be for everyone. So yeah, let us know. I'd like to see a very in-depth video on how to catch big fish out of reservoirs. Ooh. You're not seeing that. <laughs> I, I've, tr- I've begged him. I've begged him. He won't do it, Dan, so... We'll, I've seen all these thirty pounds. Maybe if we get perch, how about how about on Instagram? If we get how many subscribers would it need? <laughs> how, how, how many views in this video for you to give us a, a walk through? Three get, million. Right. Okay. Three million. <laughs> no, I don't, this is a bit. So, which episode was it that we were talking about this particular where people don't tell? Oh, I can't remember. I know you're talking about like yeah. guarding it. Yeah. The first or second one? Yeah. And um, it's weird, isn't it? Because yeah. Fishing comps as well. You've got to have a few tricks, obviously. Yeah, yeah. you've got to have your edges. Yeah. Oh, my... this, this, you, this, with, this, with this, though, you can just give everyone the wrong information. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Primal curve yeah, balls, yeah. yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what the answer yeah. would be, is that... Um, well, how can I put this? Every time you go out of these big waters, everything changes. Yeah. yeah. And you've got to be very flexible within the day. And sometimes you just got to admit you don't know what you're doing and you don't know where to go and you yep. don't know where they are and what you're trying is not working and you're blank. That's mm. how I feel most of the time when I go out to it. Yeah. And then you get that day when it something happens right. and you go, oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's a it's a voyage of discovery. Can you, I should be a politician, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Completely skirted the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On that note, I think we'll say thanks to Dan. Thanks for me and Andy. Yeah, thanks for uh, bringing me down. It's been fun. Uh, you, it's been brilliant. And I'll tell you what, we, we'll, get, we'll get more professional with a third mic. I need yeah. you to come back again. Yeah. 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 We'll have some... I mean, you're taking me musket fishing anyway. Aren't you? Well, yeah. I, I'm, on a serious note, um, I, I'm very friendly with the guys that own Musky Mayhem Tackle, and that's why we're pushing some of their YouTube videos. And they're the guys we'll probably stay with. Mm-hmm. And they were very keen for me to push the UK side to get some musky trips. Yeah. yeah. So from a serious point of view, people out there want to go, it probably won't happen this year because it's just we're just out of COVID again. So and obviously with all the stuff happening in Ukraine, mm. it's a bit of a strange time, isn't it? Yep. But definitely next year, my, my mate Jimmy, who's Swedish, and the Swedes love their musky fishing. We're trying to get trips back up again. So yeah, Dan, it's a def- we're not just saying this is yeah. we, yeah. This, this will this happen. Is happen. Yeah, this will happen. So if guys out there are interested, drop a line. 
It is expensive, you need to start saving up now. The guides charge a lot of money because they fuel the boats up. Mm. And obviously, even more so now, fuel prices have gone through the roof. Yep. But they don't mess about. They will travel seven, 10 miles quickly yeah. to go from A to B to C. And they're buzzing about these massive lakes all day and they burn the fuel like something else. Yeah. And that's most of the cost. So yep. it's great, it's, it's a trip of a lifetime. If you want to do it, get in touch and we'll organize something because it is. And also, this is a great lifestyle. It's beers, burgers, chips, talking about fishing non-stop. And on the days when it's really bad, they'll take you walleye fishing, crappy fishing, bluegill fishing. Mm -hmm. So you don't just sit there and... I'd be happy just catching bluegills yeah, over there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 but it's really good. Right, we, we really need to wrap this up. We need, to make, we need to get Charlie out of the house before he gets into big trouble. Yep. Dan, you're a superstar, as we said a million times already, but I really mean it. Thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, guys, keep watching, keep sending in your comments, and you never know who is going to appear next on the podcast. See you later.